Hello everyone, welcome back to the Small Space Series. I'm Julie and today we are tackling the small kitchen. Here's the biggest issue I see with small kitchens. They lack prep space. Once you lay out the obvious, the cooktop, stove, range, refrigerator, and sink, there might not be any room left on the countertops for appliances, gadgets, and those pretty styling pieces. This video is all about maximizing your kitchen storage and making that layout more efficient. Whether you're renovating or starting with a blank slate or looking to update your existing kitchen, give these tips a try. Smaller kitchens have a ton of advantages over a larger kitchen. The biggest being that it costs less to remodel with less finishes and materials to purchase. You'll also have a tighter, more efficient work triangle. DIY is a lot more practical, like a backsplash that you can endeavor yourself or smaller walls to wallpaper. Higher end materials are more affordable because there's less to buy, which can add major drama to a small space. If you're looking for a full scale kitchen remodel, definitely check out my top design mistakes for the kitchen. It's over 30 minutes long and jam packed with measurements, storage tricks, styling tips, finish, material, paint, styling inspo. It's one of my favorite videos that I've ever filmed and shared because there's just so much information, especially if you're starting from scratch. If you only have a small space left for your kitchen layout, consider this a blessing in disguise. While small homes and apartments can be super charming to design and decorate, they tend to be lacking in kitchen space. It's all about working with the layout you've got, whether it's a single wall, a U-shaped kitchen, a galley or corridor, or a small L-shaped corner kitchen. Your range of potential layouts is probably limited in a small kitchen, but that doesn't mean you can't inject personality and style wherever possible. This video is all about six stylish upgrades for every major detail in your kitchen. I'll be sharing all of my tips and tricks for storage, styling, organization, the colors, the finishes, basically everything you find in a small kitchen from top to bottom. Let's start with the cabinetry and cupboards. Push cabinetry all the way to the ceiling to expand the look of the ceiling height. Often, standard kitchen cabinetry has an open space at the top. While this does create a more airy feel for larger kitchens, it often looks short and stumpy for small kitchens with a shorter ceiling height. Wouldn't you rather have more usable shelving or cabinets above? Another tip you can try is to remove all of the upper cabinetry. When I bought my home, one of the first things I did was demolish the entire kitchen. I removed all of the upper cabinetry to replace with open shelving instead. Open shelves are extremely functional and make it so much easier to access dishes and glassware that you use every day. Think about your kitchen as an aesthetic means to showcase your personality, lifestyle and needs. Invest in kitchen supplies that you don't mind showing off. This look is best for singles, couples, and small families. With more mouths to feed, the dishes pile up and start looking more cluttered than chic. When I was working for Kelly Wurstler, she coined this phrase that I never forgot. Parade the porcelain, celebrate the stemware, but keep the sippy cups hidden away in a drawer. I love this idea of a modern pegboard in the kitchen for adjustable shelving that can grow with your needs. Mm -hmm. 
If you have high ceilings in a small space like I do, the vaulted portion actually comes up to over 15 feet at the highest point. It doesn't always make sense to have upper cabinets, but if you have lower ceiling heights like eight feet, bring the cabinets all the way up to the ceiling. You can also use glass cabinet doors to make a small space seem larger. The downside of pushing cabinetry all the way up to the ceiling is that it can sometimes make a kitchen feel more claustrophobic. Glass is see-through, light and airy, and can clear this closed off look. Adding interior lighting to the cabinets can also make a huge difference in how the space looks and feels. Remember that any piece of furniture can become a makeshift pantry. I use open bookshelves that I upholstered in vinyl for my pantry. It sits between the kitchen and dining, and I use it to store everything from additional stemware to my makeshift bar, even extra servingware and plates. You have an old school armoire that was handed down then repainted? Sure, that would make a great pantry. Maybe you found a school locker on FB Market for $10. Perfect! Closed cabinets are best if you're messy, but open shelves and cabinets will do just fine to add extra storage in your small kitchen. Let's move on to the finishes in your kitchen. We're talking cabinets, flooring, backsplash, wall colors. The idea is to keep all of the materials and colors cohesive. Go for neutral or lighter colors to visually expand your kitchen. You can paint your kitchen cabinetry and cupboards the same color as your walls to make everything recede. Keeping a light palette on countertops, backsplashes, walls, and millwork will help small kitchens feel more open. The goal is to create a tone-on-tone -tone palette. On the flip side, you can also keep your materials and color palette cohesive with a dark color story. Dark colors look best on one main surface only. If you choose to go black or darker hues, apply the color to either all of the cabinets, all of the countertops and backsplash, or flooring only. Having everything go black or dark will make the small kitchen feel heavier, darker, and smaller. Opt for panel-ready appliances and match them to your cabinetry and countertops for a minimalist kitchen with a sleek vibe. Here's a rental friendly upgrade for your small kitchen. Swap out all of the hardware. Make sure you measure your hardware center on center. Don't measure the length of the handle. You want to make sure you remove the handle from your cabinetry and measure the length between both of the holes. Or you can opt for no hardware. When you lean up against the counter, you might not want to feel a handle poking into your side. It's also a hazard for toddlers that are just learning how to walk and run. You might also want a clean surface where the material shines through. I'm seeing less and less hardware and more integrated pools or touch to open cabinetry. This look is not for everyone, but it's a great way to save on hardware.
Moving on to the countertops and backsplash. I have an entire video dedicated to choosing the perfect countertop for your kitchen. So definitely check that out if you're starting from scratch. Surfaces and durability are two of the key things that we need to prioritize in a kitchen countertop. While I absolutely love natural materials like marble and granite, if you anticipate heavy use, you may want to lean towards man-made materials like porcelain or quartz that allow a higher level of durability. There's a great variety of color palettes on the market today for countertops. So when you find something that's durable in the color or pattern that you love, that's the winner. Check out my video on countertops for more tips. Marble is a stunning addition in any kitchen. There's lots of polarity with this material, especially in the kitchen, and of course it depends on your style and aesthetic. I like to incorporate a full slab of marble running behind the range and backsplash. This single slab, as opposed to marble tiles, provides drama and ease of cleaning with no grout lines. If you choose tile, help draw the eyes up by covering the entire open portion of the wall with an understated backsplash. The goal is to keep the look clean and minimal and not too overwhelming with patterns and veins. On the flip side, pattern tile, wallpaper, or even peel and stick versions are perfect for smaller backsplashes that run underneath the cabinetry to add some color and fun. Would you be interested in a style guide, like a new video that features my favorite kitchen countertop and backsplash combinations? You know I absolutely love color, so this video will be far from your white on white combinations. Let me know in the comments below. Moving on to kitchen flooring. Opt for larger floor tiles. While this may sound counterintuitive, small flooring tiles actually make a room feel smaller. Use pattern unexpectedly, like on the floor. It's a perfect spot for a high impact design element since countertops and backsplash is the first thing you see. If you've selected a uniform countertop and backsplash combination, inject some pattern in the floors. I love the look of hand painted ceramic tile. I did this for my own bathroom, but I love the look in the kitchen as well. Use patterns sparingly, either on the floors or on the backsplash, but definitely not both unless that's your design intent. Too much of a good thing sometimes turns bad. Too much, too busy, too many design ideas that none really feel special. If your small kitchen doesn't already come with an island or a peninsula, you can add a prep area yourself. Much like how I did in my kitchen, you can install a rolling cart. You can move this in and out of the way. It's an extra surface prep space and bonus points for a nice mix of materials in the kitchen. You can source an island with storage underneath for pots, pans, or entertaining platters that can also double as an eat-in dining table. The top can be made of butcher block to bring in the warmth of wood, or natural stone like marble for a luxurious upgrade, or even stainless steel like mine for an industrial vibe. If your L-shaped kitchen faces a blank wall, this is the perfect spot for a floating shelf or wall-mounted table. 
This allows extra counter space or prep space or even a dining space when you can fold the surface down to be flush with the wall when it's not in use. And finally, let's talk about lighting in the kitchen. You may already have recessed or track lights in the kitchen, but think about installing pendant lights and statement light fixtures to really amp up the drama. This can be two or three identical pendants over an island, Try beautiful wall sconces over a window. Functional under cabinet lighting to highlight a beautiful countertop and work surface. Remember that good lighting and combinations of lighting are incredibly important while cooking and lighting up the heart of your home. Before you do any of the above and spend any more money on upgrades, make sure you do the following. Get rid of all the clutter that's crowding your countertops. Add shelving if you can to clear precious counter space. Much like your wardrobe, you can really edit what's needed in your kitchen. Donate or sell unused small appliances, serving pieces, or dishware to make room for all the stuff that you actually do use every single day. Make a small investment in matching dinnerware and matching glassware. And absolutely don't forget to trash all of your chipped bowls and plates. It's bad feng shui to eat out of chipped bowls and plates. If you saw on my Instagram stories, I went through this whole feng shui kick earlier in the spring and I really just went through all of my cabinets and cupboards and I threw away every single bowl and plate that had a chip in it. Not only is it bad feng shui, it could be dangerous since it can cut your finger or slice your lip. Choose glass if you're prone to chipping porcelain or ceramic. Take a cue from my own kitchen design makeover. I'll leave the link below if you haven't checked that out. And make sure that you understand all of your needs before you start demoing and specifying new materials. If you're a renter and you're looking for rental friendly tips, check out my video on apartment hacks for renters. I'll link that in the description box below. Once I finished this kitchen video, I realized I didn't share a ton of storage and organization tips with you. I mean, I'm dying to roll out this new series all about storage and organization. So let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd like like to see for the kitchen. Next week, we're talking about small dining rooms and eat-in kitchen dining areas. If you have any questions when it comes to your small kitchen design or your small dining room design, leave me a comment below and I'll be sure to address it in the next video. If you like this type of content and you're loving the small space series so far, give this video a thumbs up, share this video and this series with anyone you know who's struggling with their small space, and definitely subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop every Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.